things have been awful as far as uh, on the job sites. You know, I've, I've had about eight or nine in the last seven, eight months, eight or nine laborers that have died due to overdose, due to drugs. Our members are dying. Our members are, li are literally dying taking these drugs. Fortunately, I've been around for a while, and I've sat down with all the trades, and right now, it's, a, it's a, at an epidemic stage. And, and if we're honest with each other, if we're all honest, the trades, we, we can see it. We can see it, and we know that it's a serious, serious problem. Pain, that is a part of our business. If you do 25, 30 years and you have pain, your knees, your hands, I mean, right now it's the winter, do a winter outside, you know? So we're workers, you know? You work with your hands, you work with your bodies. At least two thirds of the people in this room today have had problems with musculoskeletal pain, either back pain, shoulder pain, or knee pain. For those in the room that have not yet had pain, about half of them will have pain over the next one year. This is not something that is specific for people within this union. This is the, the actual occurrence of these problems for adults. The problem is, for people in the union, many will find it difficult to continue with their work while they're having pain, where others with less physically demanding jobs can oftentimes struggle through an episode of discomfort. One of the most bothersome things about musculoskeletal pain is that oftentimes pain is extraordinary when it first starts, so much so that it frightens family members along with the person that has the pain. There are many treatments available for musculoskeletal pain, and most of them are found to be fairly equal in terms of their effectiveness. Simple medications such as the use of Tylenol or over-the-counter anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen or naproxen are very helpful. The use of ice or heat can be very helpful. Moving, using exercise, again, can be helpful. So there is one treatment that is not helpful for musculoskeletal pain, and that is opioids. It's extremely important to understand this. Opioids are pain medications such as Vicodin or Percocet, or their true names are hydrocodone or oxycodone. These medications help to reduce pain by interfering with the function of the pain system. And when a person has terrible pain from a fracture, a burn, or a terrible injury, these medications are a blessing. The use of opioids for more than several days are not helpful. In fact, what happens is it greatly lengthens the period of time required for recovery. Indeed, it has been found that prescriptions for opioids that are of high dose or that last for more than one week greatly increase the chances that a person will be out of work in a year, still taking opioids in a year, extremely disabled from all life activities, have surgery for the injured parts. None of these things are good, and all of them are strongly predicted by the persistent use of opioids. Most of the members of this union know of someone within their community or even within their family that has been affected with opioids and have seen horrible things that these people have gone through in order to seek opioids. In this business, if you're going to work in the construction business, if you're going to do opiates, or if you're going to do any type of drug, okay, any drug, you're not going to survive. That's the difference. You're not. You're not going to survive. You might think you're fooling us, but you're not. Your only person you're fooling is yourself. You've got one heck of an opportunity here. We pay great wages, great benefits, great retirement, but you can't do drugs. My name is Chris Heron. I have dedicated my life to sharing my story in the hopes of reaching just one person and making a difference in their life. Growing up in Far River, Massachusetts, I was recruited by the country's top basketball programs, was a McDonald's All-American, and had a dream to play in the NBA. I realized my dream, only to lose it all to the nightmare of drug addiction. First alcohol, then cocaine, and Oxycontin, before turning to heroin. One little yellow pill called Oxycontin turned into an eight-year battle. 
I have been alcohol and drug free since August 1st, 2008. Traveling throughout the country, I see and know firsthand the struggle and devastation that opioid addiction can have on an individual and their family. Before turning to an opioid for pain or an injury, educate yourself on the facts and the risks. Fact, since 2008, prescription pain medications have resulted in more overdose deaths than heroin and cocaine combined. Fact, in 2010, over 5,000 people a day reported using prescription painkillers non-medically. Fact, 100 people die from drug overdoses every day in the United States.